Good afternoon and welcome to this short CPD webinar titled Creative Ways to Teach Levels of Data. Now before we begin, uh, there's been a few changes to our webinar program, so I just want to remind you of the webinars coming up for this particular week as they're all now set. Uh, we have a webinar tomorrow, Wednesday the 19th of October at 4.30, looking at how to choose the right statistical test, and that kind of follows on quite nicely from tonight's webinar. We also have two on Sunday this week. Uh, the first one is titled Law and Order in the uh, Classroom, and this is looking at particular ways to teach forensic psychology, looking at some fun and active teaching strategies there. And then we also have one on the same night, an hour later, looking at what you really need to know about holistic marking for AQA uh, psychology. So if you've still not got your head around the, uh, the holistic marking structure for the, the new A-level, that would be a great webinar for you to attend. Now, as always, all of the uh, recordings and resources to today's webinar will be posted both in our Facebook groups and on our uh, psychology channel of the Tutor website in a series that's called uh, CPD Webinar Recordings. So you'll be able to get the PowerPoint, the recording itself, and all of the activities and resources shared in this webinar by around 8pm this evening. Uh, two things I'd like to cover in this particular webinar. The first one is I want to look at the importance of levels of measurement, exploring why I think they're, they're really important and how they could be examined. And then secondly, look at some fun uh, ways to teach levels of measurement, looking at some really practical uh, strategies, teaching strategies, uh, to get your students really up and about when teaching this particular topic. So let's make a start by looking at the importance of levels of measurement just to sort of set the context for this webinar. Now in terms of the specification, uh, the specification simply lists levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal and interval. Okay, And I think that's important to start with that particular point because actually students are not required to make the distinction between interval and ratio data um, and often this distinction is a confusing one. So my personal advice would be to avoid teaching ratio data. It's not required on the specification and actually quite often I think it adds to the confusion rather than helps students to understand. So stick with the three, nominal, ordinal and interval. Um, secondly, what's interesting is that if we look at levels of measurement as a, a point in the specification, um, it doesn't actually appear in the new sample assessment material as a standalone question in any way. However, it does appear in the context of inferential statistical tests, which we're going to look at in tomorrow's webinar. So therefore, students have to understand this, this concept of levels of measurement in order to be able to answer a question on inferential tests, and that's important. Also, that, that this particular type of question appears in all three of the sample assessment materials. So paper two is where the research method section is, uh, and in sample assessment material set one, two, and three, so all three of the available papers out there, uh, there is a question that would require students to have levels of me measurement, understanding, and knowledge, worth four marks in uh, set one, three marks in set two, and then also there is an extended response question in the final set of sample assessment materials that's almost like a research methods essay, if you will, that's worth 12 marks that again requires this understanding. So it's really, really important for students to understand levels of measurement in the context of research methods, first of all. Now, the reason it's important is because it ties into students being able to choose and select the correct statistical test, which is what we're going to explore in tomorrow's webinar. If you haven't already, we've got another 500 of these posters available. I think there are A2 in size that you can order from the Tutor to You shop website. They're free of charge and we'll send them directly to your school. And I think you can order up to three of these great posters to have in your different classrooms just to get your students familiar with the different tests. So before we look at the teaching strategies, I just want to highlight how the assessment actually asks questions that require levels of measurement knowledge. Okay, So in the first set of sample assessment materials, set one, there is a question that presents students with a table of data. And then the question simply asks them to name an appropriate statistical test that could be used to analyse the number of verbal errors in the table and explain why the particular test they've chosen would be suitable. And that's worth four marks. Now, as I've said, if we go to the mark scheme, and here's the mark scheme I bullet pointed out for you, straight away we can see that one mark is available for the student's understanding that this would be interval data. So they need to understand levels of measurement for that particular question. If we look at the uh, second set of sample assessment materials, question 14, there is a question that says, I'm not going to read the extract to you, but the question says the researcher decided to analyse the data using a Spearman's row test. Explain why this is a suitable choice of test for this investigation, and that's worth three marks. And again, if we go to the mark scheme, it's the students explicitly need to know that that is an ordinal level of data being measured in that particular test. Um, and that again is worth a mark. So in order to answer that question again, they need levels of data, levels of measurement. 
And then if we go to the third set of sample assessment materials, again, there's a, a, a data table. And question 20 says the students carried out a, a chi-square test. Explain why a chi-square test was appropriate in this particular case. And yet again, just for completion, you'll see that on the mark scheme, the first point uh, for marks is that they need to be able to say, well, the data in this particular case is nominal. So you can see straight away that it's really important for students to be able to answer any question that, question that determines them uh, to select an appropriate statistical test, they need to know these levels of measurement. On top of that, as I mentioned, there is a question in the third set of sample assessment materials that's a 12 mark question where the students are required to design their own investigation. Now, as part of this question, the students are required to analyse the data, uh, inclu including references to the descriptive and inferential statistical tests that they would choose. Again, in order for the students to fulfil that particular bullet point of the question that's highlighted on screen, if we go to the mark scheme, again, they're going to need to understand that the data they will be gathering will be ordinal, uh, and therefore the test that would lead to might be a Mann-Whitney test or a Wilcoxon test, depending upon the particular test they've chosen. So hopefully what I've highlighted by just sort of going through those very quickly, those sample assessment materials, is just how important levels of measurement appear in the new sample assessment materials within the research method section. Now, to make matters worse, hence the picture on the screen, these questions can also appear in the optional topics. And if we look at the sample assessment materials for paper three, uh, there are three questions in the block that has gender, cognition and relationships that again require students to understand levels of measurement. Okay, So not only can this question types of question appear in paper two in the research method sections, there's nothing to stop it appearing in all of the optional topics, as well as potentially the year one topics as well in the uh, in their A-level paper. So it could appear in memory, social attachment and so forth. So students really do need to grasp this concept. So there we have it. I've started by outlining why I think levels of measurement are really important. OK, um, and in the second part of this webinar, we're going to look at some fun uh, and quite active ways to teach levels of measurement that will hopefully be ways that your students will will grasp and really remember. Uh, so the first activity is called measuring levels of measurement. And this is a really, really fun activity. I remember delivering this last year. Uh, and the aim of this particular lesson is actually simply to provide you teachers with a really sort of nice, fun and interactive way of, of starting off this particular topic. OK. Uh, the beauty with this particular activity is that you don't need anything more than a, a tape measure, uh, some students obviously, uh, and a whiteboard. You don't need a PowerPoint to deliver this activity, although if you'd like one, I have provided one in the downloadable resources at the end. So if you want a PowerPoint that takes you through task by task, there is one available for you to download and use as well. Now, the way this particular activity works is, is through a series of stages that you'll get your students to actually kind of act out for want of a better expression in class okay and I remember delivering this on, on a late Friday afternoon lesson when the students had next to no motivation uh, and it really got them moving in the end it took a while but we got there in the in the end now the first part of this activity uh, is where you're going to get your students to demonstrate nominal data although you won't tell them that to begin with and very simply it doesn't matter how many students you've got this can work with small groups or large groups you asked your students to form two groups and you'd ask them to say uh, have all the tall people stand on the left hand side of the room and all the short people stand on the right hand side of the room. Now the beauty with this activity, I remember the first time I delivered it, is that your class will probably start to question you and ask you questions saying well how tall is tall, how short is short, uh, and my advice is just to sit there and give them no further information, just let them decide what is going to be their tall group and what is going to be their short group. What I would do at this stage is I would very simply plot these up on the on the whiteboard and keep them there for, for, for you to go back to later in the lesson and just have a little table where you say that there might be 10 tall students and six short students. And it's at this point it's really important not to just move straight on but to have a discussion. So they're standing on either side of the room and say, OK, well, this is this is a level of data called nominal. So we put you in categories. What What's the problem with measuring you in this particular way? What's, what, what might be the issues with this level of measurement? And what you hope your students are going to sort of come up with is the idea that, well, we don't know how tall the tall students are. Likewise, we don't know how short the short students are. We don't know the differences between the groups. Uh, and they'll, they'll get to the right idea very, very quickly. So at this point, once you've had that discussion and once you've done that sort of evaluation exercise, you'd say, OK, well, that's no good then. Let's try something different. Uh, I'd like you to all line up, form a line in the classroom. If you've got a big class, you might not want them all to form a line. You might want to select 10. But if you've got a smallish class, you might get them all to do this. Uh, for the second part, you then say, right, I want you to form a line in the classroom from the tallest person down to the shortest person. 
Again, you give them a few moments to sort of rearrange themselves. And again, I would at that point plot this up onto the whiteboard, uh, ranking them in order from tallest through to shortest. Uh, it doesn't matter what order you do it in, but just make sure you're consistent. Okay. And again, at this point, you'll want to pause and say, okay, well, this is clearly better than our tall and our short category, our nominal data. Um, but what might be the problems with this particular category? And what you'll hopefully get them to start discussing is, well, we don't know the differences between people's height. Okay. So with my names on the board, we don't know how much taller Hagrid is than Dumbledore, for example. Okay. Uh, because we've got no measurements involved. And that beautifully then leads you on to the third and final part of the activity. We say, well, in which case then, and this is why if you've got a big class, I'd probably only do it with 10 at this stage. You say, well, let's, let's take your actual height and this is where you'll need your tape measure. Okay. So what you then do is you plot the height of all of the people in the class in centimetres uh, on the whiteboard. And I've given you an example on the screen there. What's a nice idea to do at this stage is to also gather another piece of data on your students. Uh, an obvious choice would be shoe size because what you can then do with this later if you want a sort of extension activity or want to cover another topic at once is you can also get them to plot a scatter graph uh, and link this lesson also to at that point correlation as well if you want to. Okay, So I would take another measurement, avoid things like weight for obvious reasons. Shoe size tends to work quite nicely if you're after a positive correlation. Once you've done that, Again, you can have that discussion around uh, with your students at the evaluation style discussion, and hopefully they'll sort of all agree that this is clearly the best level of measurement as we know the exact height of each person. And we also know there's an equal distance between the measurements, okay? So if someone is two centimeters taller than someone who is one, well, if we look at the example on the board there, so 165 to 175, we know that's a 10 centimeter gap. And we then know that there's also roughly a 10 centimeter gap between Joseph and Jim, okay? So they're equal measurements between each of the different measurements, okay? That then leads quite nicely on, once you then have done all the active teaching, to a really simple activity just called I Know My Data. Okay, And the purpose of this is really it's a consolidation activity to make sure, sure the students are aware of the different levels of measurement. What we've done for you is we provided you with a handout with 10 different scenarios on them. Uh, I'll zoom into one just so you can see it. So scenario four says participants have to choose whether they're going to snog marry or avoid uh, a person when shown a set of photographs. Okay, uh, And the idea is the students have to justify which level of measurement it is and why. So in this particular case, they'd say, well, it's nominal because actually we've got three different categories. We've got snog, marry, avoid, uh, and therefore it's a, a category based nominal level of measurement. There's also an answer sheet provided, and that becomes a nice sort of plenary activity to that first one, just to make sure the students are fully aware of the different levels of measurement. Following on from that, the third activity, which is a really lovely one, uh, which one of our contributors, Alison, designed, really nice activity, is called Levels of Measurement in Dogs. A um, couple of ways you could deliver this, which we'll go through. Now, the purpose of this activity is really to stretch and challenge and check understanding of these different categories by getting the students to think quite creatively. All you need for this particular activity are pictures of dogs. Now, it'd be quite nice if you could get your students to bring in pictures of dogs. That would work really nicely. Failing that, we have provided you with a set of sort of cartoon dogs that will work perfectly for this activity as well. Um, if you can, I would get them to bring the pictures in there. Now, the idea of this activity is that the students are required to come up with as many different levels of measurement as possible for nominal, ordinal and interval. And you'll probably want to do this in steps. You'll probably want to say, right, nominal, first of all, come up with as many different categories as you can for the pictures of dogs that you've got. Okay. And the way I would then deliver this is that as the students come up with the categories, get them to write them on a mini whiteboard, is every unique category they come up with or unique answer they come up with in their group, that group gets a point and do it on that type of basis. Now, just to give you an idea, if you're sitting there a bit puzzled at this stage, um, if it was nominal, they could do things like working dogs versus pet dogs, long haired dogs versus short haired dog, big ears versus small ears, etc. And you would award each group a point if they come up with a unique answer. If it was ordinal, they might say ranked order in terms of the cuteness, the order that they might come in a race and so forth. And last but not least, if it was interval, they might say height in centimetres, weight in kilograms, uh, quantity of food consumed in grams, uh, etc. Okay? And you get the idea. And it's just quite a fun, competitive-based activity just to make sure they're really sort of thinking about these different levels of measurement. So there we have it, three different activities for teaching levels of measurement that hopefully will provide you with sort of a great basis uh, for some of your lessons. As I mentioned, as always, these resources will be posted into our Facebook groups uh, later this evening and uploaded to our CPD webinar uh, resources page on the website. 
Just a quick reminder before we finish that our Strong, uh, Strong Foundation student workshop is fast approaching now. The first date is on the 22nd of November and we've got dates across the country finishing in Gateshead on the 2nd of December. Some of these events are booking up quite quickly, especially the London ones only have uh, a handful of places left. So if you're thinking of coming along some, do try and book your, your tickets as quickly as can. Two different ways you can book. Uh, you can either visit the tutortu.net forward slash events page of our website or just email events at tutortu.net uh, and we can book those reserve or book those seats for you. Okay. Um, any questions, direct them through to our uh, Twitter feed or to our Facebook groups or drop me an email directly. Uh, hope we provide you with some great ideas there and we've done that literally in just 15 minutes, which is perfect. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening.